The 24 inch iMac has just been announced, but what about for the pros who want more graphics, a larger screen and better specs? Well, today that's what I'm about to uncover in this video. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Carmoon, I uncover tech and Apple related tech. So hit that like button if that's what you're into and to let YouTube's algorithm know that you wanna see more. The 27 inch iMac design has been mostly left unchanged over the past decade. And people are now asking for a bigger iMac as monitors have got bigger and bigger with more people working on 32 inch screens. Well, according to the rumors, Apple will be answering your prayers and they are increasing the size from 27 inches to 30 inches. Yes. The bezels on this new iMac will be much smaller, similar to what we see on the M1 iMac 24 inch, but don't worry, these bezels won't be white. These will have black bezels as professionals who color grade photos and videos prefer black bezels. Now, the question is, will Apple really really not include white bezels if the 24 inch model has white bezels and normally the designs stay the same on the larger models. I don't think so because I think that the iMac will potentially be rebranded to iMac Pro following their naming structure from their iPads, their AirPods and their iPhone. Each of these products have a Pro version which is normally very different to their normal counterparts in design, color and specs. By Apple rebranding the new iMac to the iMac Pro, they can use a different design and package so that it makes sense when you are coming from other products in Apple's lineup. For example, if you want a Pro phone, you would go for the iPhone 12 Pro. If you want a Pro iPad, then you would go for the iPad Pro. And now, if you want a Pro level Mac, then you would go for the iMac Pro. As I've said in previous videos, the multicolored options on the non-Pro devices is Apple's way to separate their consumer devices from their Pro devices and the iMacs will be getting that same treatment. Going back to the screen, this will most likely be a 5.5 resolution display if we want to keep the same 117 pixels per inch for the iMacs. But even though it may be marketed as a 30 inch display, we may actually potentially see it be a 29.5 inch display, similar to the 24 inch iMac being actually 23.5 inches. Gone is the LCD display we've had for years with mini LED taking its place, making it the best iMac screen so far. Buy 500 nits of brightness and double it. Yep, 1000 nits of brightness. HDR content is hitting the mainstream with this being the first Mac that will be able to edit this accurately out of the box. We will see this have wide P3 color support and 10 bit color depth. So if you wanna start producing good HDR content, then this could be the Mac for you. Now it probably won't have the same 10,000 LED array like we've seen on the iPad Pro, but more like the Pro XDR display with between 500 to 600 LEDs. That way it won't cost much more to manufacture than the LCD displays, but will have a significant improvement on what we already have. So yes, you've seen it on my renders, but the chin is here to stay. Apple won't let it go just yet, even for the pros, but it's gonna be really useful. The chin allows Apple to make the device much thinner because rather than housing all the tech behind the screen, they can house it all inside the chin and make the iMac much slimmer. Whether you like it or not, this does make sense. Housed in this chin, along with the motherboard, will be speakers that are even better and louder than the iMac 24 inch, which currently have the best speakers on a Mac so far. So the 30 inch iMac will most likely take that crown. Sorry, 24 inch iMac, you won't be having that title for much longer. This will also feature spatial audio and will feature studio grade microphones. Let's be honest though, this isn't gonna be something that audio experts are gonna be using to record their next album, but for those Zoom calls, you're gonna sound great. Speaking of Zoom calls, we will see the same 1080p camera as what's found in the iMac 24 inch, which according to Apple is the best webcam they've ever put in a Mac. And these are only gonna get better because the 30 inch iMac will be getting the M1X chip with a better image single processor or ISP than the M1 chip. Before we talk about the chip inside this thing, and oh boy, is this gonna be a game changing chip. So keep watching because this is gonna be good, but let's get into the ports. So I think that we'll see four full speed USB four ports that will have Thunderbolt in each one. I think that we may also see the same magnetic charging cable from the 24 inch iMac. However, with a larger power brick to feed the potentially more power hungry chip. I think that we'll also see two or three 
USB-A ports as pros still rely on these ports. But knowing Apple, I guess they're probably gonna get rid of these just like they did with the 24 inch model. Also to potentially go maybe the SD card slot, but seeing as Apple only just introduced the UHS-2 card slot in the 27 inch not that long ago, I'm hoping that we'll still see the same slot here, but maybe placed in the side of the iMac rather than in the back. I think that we'll also see 10 gig ethernet potentially as an optional extra, as we know that the M1 chip is capable of it with the M1 Mac mini having it. So it's only reasonable that we'll see the same here. Now, will the ethernet port be in the charger instead of in the iMac itself? Your guess is as good as mine at this point. As you can see in the renders, the new 30 inch iMac is gonna be thin, like very thin. My best guess is it's gonna be between 14 to 15 millimeters just to house the beefier cooling system and to house those big speakers in the chin too. We won't see the same color options as the 24 inch iMac, but instead potentially see more professional colors like a silver model for the base models with maybe the top end getting the space gray version. Now me personally, I would love all the models to get the space gray color, but knowing Apple, you'll probably have to pay more to unlock it, just like you see on the 24 inch iMacs. Now let's talk about the chip because this M1 chip will be game changing for the pros because finally we'll see graphics and processing performance double. Now this is my speculation, but I think that we'll see a 12 and 16 core CPU variants and 16 and 32 core GPU variants. Now these won't be two different chips, but will actually be the same chip with one having binned cores. So if you don't know what I'm talking about here, I think the M1X or potentially even a higher level chip like an M1Z will be a 16 core CPU and 32 core GPU chip. Now in the manufacturing of chips, some of them don't pass the quality tests in all the cores. So rather than Apple throwing away these chips, Apple can just sell those chips by turning off those cores that didn't pass those tests and offering a lower cost option, which is pretty normal in the chip industry. And we've already seen this with the M1 chip having either seven or eight core GPU variants. Now in order to look forward, we need to look back at the current 27 inch lineup to see how it looks and how Apple will scale this to Apple Silicon. Now right now the base model 27 inch gets the slowest CPU and GPU configurations with the top end getting the option for the fastest CPU and GPU combo. I think that we'll see this replicated with Apple Silicon with potentially the first two models getting the 12 core CPU and 16 core GPU chips and then the top end model will get the full fat 16 core CPU and full fat 32 core GPU. GPU. Now I will get into pricing later, but this will allow Apple to keep their margins while offering the iMax with a lot of performance. So performance wise, I think that we will see the 12 core CPU performance with its eight high performance cores and four efficiency cores perform twice as fast as the M1 with the 16 core variant with its 12 high performance cores and four efficiency cores performing three times as fast as the M1. Yeah. I couldn't believe it either, but we know that Apple are gonna be throwing cores and more cores to get the levels of performance that pros are looking for now. And moving on to the GPU, the 16 core GPU will perform twice as good as the M1 chip and the 32 core version will be about four times as good. So to put those numbers into perspective, the new 30 inch iMac could outperform the current Mac Pro in CPU performance. And with that 16 core GPU model, that could perform just as good, almost as good as the 5500 XT with the 32 core GPU model outperforming the AMD Radeon uh, 5700 XT. Looking at the RAM configurations, I think that the first two models, you'll be able to have the option of 64 gigabytes with the top end model being configurable up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. The SSDs will be configurable up to eight terabytes. So I don't think we'll see any more because that's what we currently see with the Intel based 27 inch iMacs. So that's all great, but how much are these Macs gonna cost you? Well, the first two models are gonna cost you about the same at uh, 1800 and 2000, and the top end iMac will be at 2300. So this is actually a fantastic deal because even though we are seeing the same pricing, you're actually getting between 500 to 
to $1,000 of extra value compared to last year's model, which is pretty crazy. I say this because if you fully spec out the CPU and GPU on any one of these 27 inch iMacs, they will still be slower than the rumored 30 inch iMacs. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below and check out the links down in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechHarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two videos right over here. Click on one of them. You're absolutely going to enjoy it. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.